Good morning. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, sun is shining bright out there. I was picking up Michael Dykus this morning. He's been having some car issues and stuff. And I went downtown and saw on the uh, thermometer for the bank that's downtown St. Joe that it said it was four degrees. And it was kind of deceiving. I thought, whoa, the sun's shining out. It felt like it was warmer. So I was deceived. <laughs> but I've heard that uh, we're going to have an extra zero to that four degrees uh, by tomorrow. It looks like we're going to have 40 degree weather this weekend, which uh, I'm looking forward to. Um, so I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I want to welcome you to today's uh, devotion time. We're going to be talking about preparing the way. And uh, Got a big map behind me. Uh, most of you have probably been watching a little bit and getting snippets of news with regard to the Ukraine and Russia. And I certainly want to lift up that situation today. I know that there's been a lot of discussion about what could happen, what could occur, and people's lives that are, what things are going on for people's lives right now. So I certainly want to lift them up in prayer before we start today as well. So. Uh, thank you for being here. I uh, hope you're doing well. A lot of people have had that flu bug going around, uh, but it's a sign of springs are coming. So, <laughs> so as we ride the, the roller coaster of ups and downs of our temperature, just know that spring is around the corner. And uh, so let's go ahead and start our time off today in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this day, God. Thank you for the day that we've been given. Lord, we thank you for your church, Lord. We thank you for the work you're doing in your church here uh, at Grace, Lord. Thank you for the people within the congregation and those that uh, aspire to be like you and live a life that honors you. Lord, uh, we just certainly lift up uh, <clears throat> those in the Ukraine today with the situation at hand. Uh, I can't even imagine what that would be like having to go through that if we were facing such a uh, bombardment of things military-wise in our own country, how that would be such an upheaval of what we've known. And so, God, I just pray for those that are going through that right now. We pray for safety of people. We pray for this situation to be rectified and that there would be uh, no more loss of life there. God, we thank you for our servicemen and women that serve those that have even been called to various regions outside of Russia and those other surrounding areas. Uh, Lord, we just pray for their safety and welfare as well. Lord, I thank you for the time that we've been given. Uh, I pray that you would even guide and direct my time as I talk about that which was prepared today for our devotion time. We also want to lift up the Honduras mission uh, team that has been there feet on the ground this past week and that are now getting ready to travel back uh, tomorrow and so we just thank you for the good work I understand that there's been several there that had issues with um, dehydration and not feeling well and we just thank you for the fact that many of them are doing better and we just pray for travel mercies on the way back and we look forward to hearing from them about their work and experiences there in Honduras. Uh, so again, be with us in this time, God. Thank you for the time that we had together. And it's in your name we pray, amen. All right. Now, uh, the focus person, obviously, is, uh, for today's uh, devotion time is John the Baptist. You know, um, often John the Baptist in, in children's ministry is often the things you remember about him is that he obviously baptized Jesus and that I know many kids will remember when asked about John the Baptist uh, that he, he wore camel skin and he ate locusts and wild honey. And often his role, his instrumental role is overlooked. Even in some of the curriculum that we, we use uh, for teaching children, uh, there is focus on John the Baptist, but obviously the more important, as we would all say, is Christ and his role. So I understand it, but it is interesting. And I just wanted to kind of look a little bit at John the Baptist today in his message that was fixed upon preparing hearts for repentance. You know, 
John was faithful in his calling and was instrumental, very instrumental in preparing the way for Christ and his ministry as he entered into it at the age of 30. I want to read uh, just a one portion of scripture found in John 1 29 that records the time or statement that John makes after he's already baptized Christ and that Christ has already uh, went into the wilderness and is, has returned. And we know that this is of great importance because even in the word of God that there is an exclamation point with this statement. And so I just love the passion and commitment of John as I read this. So it's John 1 29, which states, the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He pointed that out. That was his mission. His whole desire was for people, pointing people to Christ. And in this statement, we find a, a powerful identification of who Christ is by John as the sacrificial lamb of God, who would, as we know, would take the summative, complete sin, all the sins, past, present, future of the world. It was a declaration, really, of freedom for hearts needing forgiveness and rescue. And John provided solid witness that this Jesus was indeed the Son of God. He wasn't just a good teacher. He wasn't just a man. John made it he was very, very clear that this was indeed the Son of God. And as we found here, we see that he is, you know, the, the Lamb of God, the sacrificial Lamb. Again, preparing way for repentance of people. Jesus would ultimately, as we know, would take his message uh, with his disciples that he called to him to, to a world in need. Now, it was such a wonderful story. When you look at the story of Christ calling his disciples, you look at the preparation of John here, it's a wonderful story of redemption. In looking at God, if you look at the disciples, each one, as they were called into ministry, this redemptive work that Jesus was doing within their lives to touch lives and to reach lives. It's just a great thing. And, and John was, again, faithful for, to prepare the way and declare the mission of Christ. He, told, he declared the mission of Christ. And, uh, and so uh, with the disciples that would be called by God, where God called them, he equipped them. And the same is true for us. Now, as Christians, we have been given, uh, you know, the Great Commission. And, and we are equipped by Christ to prepare hearts for repentance as well, to receive the gift of the sacrificial lamb. Now, we know that Jesus is indeed the son of the living God. And so the thing I want to think about today and put into your mindset is looking at the role of John. His sole focus was to prepare and point to Christ. And uh, he, didn't, he didn't focus on beyond that. His whole mission was to set it up center stage for Christ. And it's just a beautiful thing to think about how he, his whole desire was just to lift Christ up to show and demonstrate who he was. You know, the Holy Spirit provides the equipping we need. We've, we've heard about that in different messages, and I'm sure you're aware of that. And we talk about that with children, the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit, not to overlook and his ability to help us and to help, help us boldly speak the truth. And we know also that the Holy Spirit is key in helping stir the hearts of every future believer, you know, and I like to think of that as future believer. Yeah, we call it unbeliever, but we look at future believer with that context that God <laughs> can reveal himself and people might choose him and, and to reason with the evidence of the gospel. Now, as Christians, uh, may we consider how, like John, we may be faithful to prepare the way, prepare the way. May we boldly proclaim the truth uh, in love and be faithful, faithful to his call in our lives as well. When I was looking at some of the things I wrote, I was thinking about, uh, you know, how all this obviously requires faith. 
It requires the relinquishment of our will to do his will. And and our understanding of our role as part of God's redemptive work. And so today, as we look at uh, John the Baptist, I've looked at John the Baptist, I encourage you to look at how your role can prepare the way for others to receive the good news of the gospel and receive Christ. And maybe, you know, let us aspire to, to speak of the love of Jesus through our actions. May we aspire to preach the love of Jesus through our words. And may we demonstrate the love of Jesus through our deeds. You know, we have been given a wonderful opportunity to do all these things, to represent Christ in our lives, to, to, to bring the good news to people. Help us to be vigilant in that. And, and, uh, and let, us, let us be vigilant in that and, and care but nothing else just to be able to set and prepare the way that God may show himself to people. So today, let's think about that, how we might prepare the way. How might we prepare the way for folks, uh, either through direct witnessing of obviously uh, giving the message, but knowing that we are planting seeds all along. And preparing the way for Christ. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. I'll get to talking too much more and and uh, make this into a 40 minute <laughs> devotion. So let us let us pray today. And uh, if you have anything you're going through and you need uh, support or anything, I just again we always I always want to mention that to you that we're here for you. It is a privilege to to do life together. And uh, so do use that if you have a prayer request or anything. Please let us know. Let's go ahead and go to the Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the example of John the Baptist. His sole desire was that people would have their hearts prepared to receive the message of repentance and opportunity to receive that, of, to receive forgiveness of sins to recognize that you were indeed the Son of God, the sacrificial lamb. And so, God, I pray that in our lives we would be motivated to do likewise, that our desire would be that we would set the stage up, set it up for your redemptive work in people's lives. Let us show your love and, and speak of your love and demonstrate your love through our words and actions and deeds. Help us to be concerned with being good messengers so that we, we can set it up for you to do your mighty work and that your Holy Spirit might be able to be freed and loosed to, to, to convict and to, to draw close so that the truth that we desire to show can be understood and that forgiveness can be uh, provided as a result and that a new birth can, can occur in people's lives. A new, that they might acquire a new life like we have and that we have been reborn as we rest, wrestle in our, our flesh with the world and things that go on and our own temptations. We just thank you, Lord, that we have you and your promises to stand upon through your word. Be with my friends today, Lord, as they have friendships and acquaintances. They, they are connected with people that need to know who you are. So I, I would pray also that your Holy Spirit would give us the boldness and the desire that each person's heart would come to a point of repentance and recognizing a need for repentance. I pray for those relationships that they have invested in, Lord, would be fruitful for that opportunity. So thank you for this day, God. We thank you that you equip us. We thank you for your equipping. And Lord, we thank you that we don't have to do it alone. We have each other as well. Not only are you there for us, <laughs> praise God for that, praise you for that, but we have been equipped with one another through your body. So let us be united and strong together and prepare the way for hearts that need repentance. Amen. Well, thank you for being here, guys and gals. <laughs> I hope you have a, a great day. And God bless you guys, and go bless. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.